You're watching News View with Lee Sullivan. Welcome back. It's News View visiting with Ron Hart, syndicated columnist, author, and for me, more importantly, uh, Fox News View contributor. <laughs> I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that just about the time I think in the great toilet bowl of life we're going around for the last time and going down, I am reminded that it can get worse. This NASA chief, next frontier, better relations with Muslim world. You got it, NASA, NASA chief. Through international diplomacy would seem well outside NASA's orbit, Bolden said in an interview with Al Jahiza that strengthening those ties was among the top tasks President Obama assigned him. He said better interaction with the Muslim world would ultimately advance space travel. That's right. <laughs> they blow us up. That we, that's it. When I became NASA administrator, or before I became NASA administrator, he charged me, that would be Hussein, with three things. One was he wanted me to help re-inspire children to want to get into science and math. He wanted me to expand our international relationship. And third, perhaps foremost, he wanted me to find a way to reach out to the Muslim world and engage much more with dominantly Muslim nations to help them feel good about their historic contribution to science and math and engineering. Puke. <laughs> Just go to the toilet and throw up. Well, so far so good. The, the Muslims really like us since he's become president. He's really been better. Uh, you know, this guy's uh, Obama. It's fine to compare himself to Can FDR. You I know, I know. He's, he's, comp he's comparing himself to FDR, to Abraham Lincoln. But in reality, as I said in the column, uh, actually coming out this week, he's really more like Eisenhower. He's escalated wars. <laughs> he's fired generals that spoke poorly of him, and he plays a lot of golf. I mean, this guy is all over the place in terms of what he wants, but, you know, these agencies have become nothing. They've become ideological uh, mirrors of the Obama administration. They talk a big game. They do nothing in, in reality. The, the whole situation with the Gulf oil spill shows you truly how inept government is. Who would have thought you'd have a major oil spill in the Gulf and your greatest hope is Kevin Costner? Really? It, it, it's come to that. I mean, it's, it, it's but as, as I said in the column this week, hopefully it'll make people realize that all these overarching promises and all these grandiose speeches about how government's going to fix everything, hopefully the average person, it will resonate with them that the government really can't do anything. They've proven it over and over and over. The only time government really, or the American people really, respond well is when there's a wolf at the door. Uh, World War II was a major situation. 9-11 was a major situation. What we have now is termites in the basement, okay. a decaying America who's spending more money than they have, the values are shifting in the wrong direction, and we don't respond well to that, to slow-moving situations where ideology is moving to the left. But I think there's an awakening. The Tea Parties, I think, are a major, major part of the, the, the realignment of American thinking, and it's not so much around taxes or whatever, it's more about freedoms and, and, and individual rights and, and, and overreaching part of the government. So, uh, if there's, and that's the reason the left is so quick to vilify the Tea Parties, because they're scared of them. They don't want people to have the right to vote. They want, we have a country right now governed by a 10 to 15 percent ultra liberal part of our country. Uh, Pelosi, Reid, and these people. This is not our country. This is not the demographic of the voting American people. We're not that liberal, but somehow they're in charge, and they got till November to raid the Treasury. It's like looting right. after Katrina. Right now, they're passing all the bills they can and the consequences be damned. They don't really care because either they really believe this or it helps entrench their power longer. <clears throat> Where is Alec Baldwin uh, with the oil well? Uh, I mean, and Sharon Stone and Britney Spears and, and whatever. Where are they? I'm they waiting seem on Quincy, to be absent yeah. without leave. Don't Quincy they? Jones should do a, do a We Are the World type well, of thing. Well, Jeff said they still have the text for uh, uh, a relief for Haiti. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, they're torn on this one because it's an embarrassment to their president. They don't want to highlight any embarrassment to their president. They can't blame Bush. They can't blame the right. They can't blame, you know, they, the environmentalists push the drilling offshore. It should be closer to shore. It wouldn't be a problem right now. So it's just like the nuclear reactors that we stopped building in the 70s that we should not have stopped building. Right. The environmentalists are completely wrong. They're emotional. They, they go with their emotion. They got no sense of what really is reality. And the politicians fall in lockstep. They push the drilling offshore. 5,000 feet, then another nine or 10,000 feet below shore. They can't fix it. I reminded the movie, uh, There Will Be Blood. I don't know if you saw that movie yes, or not. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, great movie. But even those guys had dynamite to blow up their oil wells when they got out of right. control. We can't 
we're not even set to do that below the, the, the ocean. And if we don't drill, and the other part of that movie that I, I remind my kids yesterday is the part about I'll drink your milkshake. If we don't drill down there, don't you think for one second Cuba, Cuba Venezuela, right. and, all, and Vietnam won't drill down there? Laterally. Thanks to Jimmy Carter, they can drill like 60 miles off our shore. He right. gave that up in 1977. Thanks to Jimmy Carter again for another, you know, you had the canal always, and all the other I things always, he did. I say I always wanted Jimmy Carter to marry Jane Fonda. That'd okay. be perfect. You know, and create a new, like, genetic culture of zero. <laughs> a big zero. Yeah, it's, it's pretty for a bad. decimal point. But, he, you know, he did the Panama Canal. And, he, he, you know, there's two types of people in America. Those that know the failed policies of Jimmy Carter and those who are witnessing them right now. And it's the same type of situation. As, as Mark Twain said one time, you know, history doesn't always repeat itself, but it always rhymes. And this is very similar. <laughs> Ron Hart, we'll be right back. You're watching News View with Lee Sullivan. I wouldn't say them, no matter what. I don't know what they are, but I won't say them. Welcome <laughs> back. It's News View. I'm visiting with Ron Hart. And we're talking about, we're, we're talking about America as we find it today. And uh, <clears throat> it looks like, I thought for sure they were going to summarily execute Michael Jackson's doctor, but it seems to have taken a different path. Yeah, right? Dr. Conrad Murray, he... Uh, Got his license back. Doesn't look like he's going to suffer any consequences. You know, the L.A. juries are tough, and they'll let you, celebrities get off for, <laughs> for sure. But they, they were stern in one matter. They, he promised not to kill any more Jacksons. That was the part. I mean, he's okay. I'll do that, Judge. And then he walked. Like Lindsay Lohan, they put the little ankle <laughs> bracelet right. on. You know, you're a celebrity, you skate. You know, ever since O.J. and you, know, you get down the road, yeah. But the, you know, even even back in the day, the Jackson family, Joe Jackson. I mean, he runs a tight ship with that Jackson family. Right. Now, even if Michael had been caught molesting kids and been convicted of that, he'd already determined that Tito was going to serve the sentence. <laughs> so he's going to use his most productive kid on stage and then oh, keep him out man. that way. So. I tell you what, you know, sometimes those lives can be so much more tragic than yeah. people uh, imagine that they can be. I mean, they look at that and they think, oh, here's somebody that has everything, and if you examine it more closely, yeah. all too often they don't have anything at all. Yeah, I read one time where someone says every life's, everybody's life's like the Liberty Bell, uh, especially celebrities is it looks really good from a distance but as you get closer you see the cracks <laughs> it's always the case right. and, and america loves building our, our celebrity up and tearing them down it's, it's, a, it's a you know brutal situation clearly the jacksons had uh had vulnerabilities right. uh you know but you know michael jackson's gonna make more more money in death than he will in life like right. elvis did elvis I mean, right same way right. i want to die like they did you know, not, you know not on the toilet passed out but with a gift shop near my grave that's what right. i want <laughs> Right. I don't think I'll have to worry about you that. Yeah. No, I don't no, think I might get a lot of things. <laughs> I, I, might, I might serve as a urinal for some people, <laughs> but I don't think I'll have to worry about the other. Ron Hart, we'll be right back. <laughs> 